everybody, Jason Ledeen with the Dice Tower, and we're here at Essien Spiel 2015. And today with me, I have Reiner Knizia, one of the greatest designers of all time. And we're going to just talk about his history, because this is now your 30th year doing this. Well, actually, it's much, much longer. I'm slightly older than L30, but we, from our business point of view, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary. So 30 years ago, the first game was published in a magazine, but it was a game. It was not self-published. It was really published by somebody else. And what game was that that you, was your first game that you did? Uh, it was in a magazine. It was called Complica. And at the same time, or at the same year, 1985, we had also got the Tour de France. Both of these games have only been magazine games. It's a start, and then we did a few others afterwards. Just a few others. Yes. <laughs> so you've done, there's a lot of games that you've done. You had a whole series with Samurai, Tiger Sue, Fates, where you had the mechanic of whatever is your second most collected is what scores the points. Yes. How proud are you of that mechanic? I am proud of some of these mechanics which I developed in the 90s essentially and uh, for me, particularly coming from a European origin, uh, mechanics is very, very crucial and having some innovative mechanics um, I think is very important, particularly when we're talking about kind of gamers games. Uh, it's also that the mechanics and the scoring system, as you named it, um, actually drives the gameplay and makes the gameplay very exciting. Uh, yes, I can just simply collect points and the more points I get is fine. But if you have a little twist there, it just, uh, it just uh, makes the game more challenging. And both of those were just reprinted as well. Yes. How proud are you when you see that your games that you made 15, 20 years ago are being reprinted and are still liked at this time. Well, that actually makes me very proud because, um, as you say, both of the games, uh, Euphrates and Tigris and uh, Samurai, have just been released by Fantasy Flight. And it just shows that there are some classics which are very well recognized and uh, which have stood the test of time. And uh, people still enjoy them and I still enjoy playing them. Uh, times change and today we have electronics in there, we have tech building games, we have all sorts of different games. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything else doesn't count anymore. And uh, so yes, it's very nice. You have other ones that I know, Amen Ray, that's soon to be reprinted? Yes, uh, that uh, is actually one where I have done a lot of work with um, and I'm still, I am still fascinated by the auction mechanism because um, you just go anywhere and uh, you can um, overbid the other one and then he has to go somewhere else and finally through the prices everybody is somewhere else and if so everybody is in a different province then that's what you want at your price yes if you're not happy go somewhere else overbid him and then you can have his province and it's relatively simple but it's uh, it causes very very uh, challenging um, gameplay Yes, yes, it's one of my favorites. Um, Taj Mahal is another one that has really cool mechanism for bidding. <laughs> yes, that is true. And for Taj Mahal, I'm still looking for somebody to reprint it. Because as you say, uh, Amun Ray is going to be uh, uh, with Super Meeple in Europe and it with Tasty Minstrel Games in America. Uh, and Taj Mahal is uh, my next big project uh, to see. <laughs> so we might actually see Taj Mahal again? I would hope so, yes. I think Taj Mahal is, again, one of my classics. There's lots of nice uh, elements in there. I, you see, I also, when we republish these games, I'm always looking at the possibility to adding a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. I don't like to change the classic rules because that causes confusion. But that doesn't mean in Euphrates and Tigers that we can't have suddenly a double-sided board and then you have a different board, you play the same game, but because the topology is different and Euphrates and Tigers flow differently, so suddenly you get a different game dynamics and so those people who have known the game suddenly find a new aspect to it. Yes, and um, you've also done a lot of puzzle type games, um, Ingenious, one of your best. Um, how often do you like to do puzzle games as well? And um, I got very interested in puzzle games when uh, I saw that there's a possibility to do abstract games. I think in former times publishers made a self-fulfilling prophecy out of saying abstract games do not sell. 
And then we had the success of uh, Blockers mm. and of Ingenious. And I think that started a wave and then shortly afterwards there was Quirkle. And so I think now it's a proven concept that there are very good abstract games and they have the advantage, the seams, because they don't have one, don't wear off. So they can become very, very interesting long sellers, yes. And so with this respect, um, um, I, I got very interested in it because I had an initial uh, success. And then of course the second wave was when the electronics came up because a lot of the puzzle and brain teaser games you can do very elegantly on the electronic with the electronic yes. support and can vary a lot of things. And so for a while I spent actually a lot of time on looking at what can you do on this very small screen. Uh, and it taught me a lot about games again because people don't want to read rules, people just want to switch it on and know how to play it. And I think with every new category uh, you develop as a designer, you learn for all the other categories as well. And so it was again, I tried to learn and learn, and uh, it fascinated me a lot. And of course, we had some puzzle games there, and today you can find them in the different app stores and can try them out. Speaking of um, electronics, you have a new game that we saw here, that I saw upstairs um, during the preview, um, Captain Black. Yes. Tell us about that. I really like the mechanics of this one. Yeah, the, um, I am fascinated about this game and I'm very proud of this game and I think we spent a lot of time developing it and then Ravensburger, who is publishing it, did a great job of actually turning it into a super product. The first thing you do is you open the box and you build the ship. And the ship is actually three feet long. It is big, big, big. And as you know, when, when yes. people go here, uh, on the stand, they say, okay, so that's a demo ship, and how big is the ship inside? I say, no, this is the real, real ship. Yes. So that is an eye catcher. And then there's electronics in there, but it's very much hidden. We have this ghost, the Captain Black, and it's a figure. It's quite nice and big, and uh, you just have to switch it on, and it speaks to you. And so you have the atmosphere of the sounds, you get all these instructions by the Captain Black, because the story is. Uh, there is this Captain Black, the ghost of Captain Black actually, and he wants to finally get back to his treasure, tre uh, treasure island and find his final piece there. And so he needs somebody to get him there because he's on a ghost, he can't do it. And so he finds us. We are not very big sailors, but he gives us instructions how to sail his ship. Unfortunately, his ship is very old, hundreds of years old, and it's just not doing the job. So we have all these challenges of uh, fixing the leaks and getting rid of the rats. And then there's a fire there and then the Kraken comes up and tries to scratch the ship. And then we have the pirates, of course. And then the, 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 the ghost gets more and more uh, agitated because he says, if it gets dark, I will disappear, I will vanish. We need to get there before. And so he gets into our way and uh, of course the electronics can make the game different every time. It's a cooperative game, so we have a good group experience in trying to help cope with all these tasks and get the sails up and then the storm comes, get the sails down uh, and see if we can make it or how far we can go. And of course the little, now comes the little trick, the little scoring thing, um, it is cooperative. We want to win together, but the individuals get rewards and can find little gold coins because once we got there, got the big treasure, we also have to sail back. And the one who collects the most gold coins in this cooperative game will be the captain to sail back. So there is a selfish, just a little <laughs> selfish moment in there that people say, oh yeah, this is good for the party, but I'll just take the gold coin. It wouldn't be a pirate game without some selfishness in it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so this one, it's only in German right now then? Yes. Is there a plan? Would you like to get it in English as well? I would absolutely love to get it in English. I, this is in the hands of Ravensburger. It's electronics. We need to exchange the sound files. And uh, I mean, the whole game is, of course, easily transferable. It's essentially language independent, apart from the ghost. And the ghost, at the moment, only speaks German. <laughs> so we need to teach him English, and we teach him, teach him all the other languages. And uh, uh, I, I hope, I mean, Ravensburger waits what is happening now for the Christmas business and so on. But I am I'm very confident that we will see that in other languages, and I think the first one we'll see is in it's English, then, yes? But I'd like to. I would love to see it in English. Do you hear that, Ravensburger? English version of it, we want to have it in the U.S. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> so, um, is there any other games specifically that came out that you've released here that you are excited about? I'm excited about um, a Star Wars game which is coming out uh -huh. uh, here, or has come out three weeks ago. Uh, it's a Dice Rebellion. I know Star Wars is a very big topic. I know that they are slicing the licenses very thin, so there will be more than the one Star Wars game of us out there. But uh, it was a great pleasure to work um, on, 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 on this great uh, IP and uh, actually to, to have the context to Pixar and Disney is, is fascinating. I mean, you, you grow up as a kid and you see these movies and, uh, and suddenly you are not in them, but you are you're very close to them and you create something there. So it was a great pleasure to do this game and uh, it's, a, it's a family game. It's not a gamer's game. It has a dice-driven mechanism. And again, it's, um, this is the other way around in a way because um, it is competitive, but there are individual tasks on each of the planets you're visiting. And if you contribute to the past, uh, the task, then you don't get any rewards. Only the one who finishes the task gets a reward. But as everybody contributes, it's kind of a, oh, we are all in it together. We are the good side of uh, the Star Wars um, epic. And, uh, but we try to prove that we are the best one. Yes, I mean, for me, anything that has Star Wars, I get excited about. So that one I'm looking forward to because it's Star Wars. And I know I'm just excited about the movie. Are you excited about the movie? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm excited about the movie. And um, I can actually tell you a secret. Really? I, I know more. Spoilers here. I know more about the movie than you think. <laughs> because I am, I'm not allowed to say it, but I am working on a... Star Wars 7 game as Are well. you? Yes. A Star Wars Episode 7 game? Yes. And will this come out before the movie or after the movie? It will come out with the movie. With the movie. And I know the whole script. <laughs> and you have to kill me. So I'm jealous. I I'm very jealous right now that he knows the whole script to Star well, Wars. I guess not the whole script, but I know some elements of it. They are very, very, keeping this stuff very close to the Yes, chest. I know. But, but, Two uh, months for that and a new Star Wars Episode Seven game as well. Um, so anyway, uh, Dr. Reiner Knizia, it's been a pleasure having you. It was a pleasure to be here on, uh, on your show. and. Uh, I hear a lot of people talking about the Dice Tower. I think uh, a lot of people love what you're doing and you're reaching out for a lot of people. I think you're doing a great, great jobs and great uh, uh, things for our industry, for our culture. So uh, I can only congratulate you on your success and I hope you will have many, many years to celebrate your 30th and 300th anniversary soon. Yes. We hope so too. I mean, for us, we love games, so for us it's more about exposing everyone else in the world to the games because we fell in love with games and now we want everyone else to fall in love with the games and you're doing a very good job on this one thank well, you thank you very thank much thank you too so once again i'm jason levine here with dr reiner knizia and this is one of our my essence field 2015 designer spotlights thanks so much for watching the dice tower video find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.